Alright guys, let's jump right into this. PW here once again and doing part two of setting up the Marantz SR7010. In part one we left off the video where I actually connected all of the HDMI cables. So I went ahead and connected um, our audio video cables for our cable satellite box. I went ahead and connected our HDMI cable for our Blu-ray player, in that case just using a Pioneer Elite Blu-ray player. I went ahead and connected the PlayStation 4 down there, you can hardly see it, but uh, and then we connected our RCA cables for our external power amplifier if we're running an 11.2 channel system and we want an additional two channels. Uh, I did point out the fact that I would use an external power amplifier to power the front left and right speakers as well. Uh, for this video I'm just going to connect though these two front bookshelf speakers over here uh, as our fronts and then I'm going to run these from an external power amp but for this video I want to actually connect these on up to show you guys. So, easiest way is going to be using banana plugs of course uh, but when setting up any surround sound receiver the easiest thing it's going to be to place your speakers where they're going to sit permanently first. So once you've determined your layout, I know in my situation I can't have the center channel any higher than it is. Um, I have to actually mount the TV screen on the wall and if we're staying at this property any longer I'm probably going to go ahead and do that, mount that Sony TV up on the wall so I can place the center channel on the top where it should be at listening level. Uh, so we've got our front speakers though placed where they should be. I've got a pair of bookshelves here I'm going to be moving soon. Um, but for this video, it's going to be connecting the speaker wires on up. I left off actually grounding my subwoofer cable, and if you've got a subwoofer issue, um, or if you've got a cable that can that can literally be grounded, I highly recommend grounding it up because it uh, just eliminates any possibility of interference or hum coming from that subwoofer. So. Um, I've got two front speaker wires out here. They're a set of Rocket 33s from AudioQuest. First thing for me to do is going to be connect those in the back. So, um, I, I didn't point this out before, but it might be easier with some receivers. Most receivers are going to have the speaker terminals on the bottom and the back of them. Uh, so it might be easier to do your speakers first as opposed to doing the HDMI cables first, as I did in my video. However, in this one, we're just going to continue on where we left off. So I had all my wires running over here, kind of placed out properly where there should be. Um, it was too difficult to do it one-handed on video, so I'm going to bring you guys back around here with some light really quick and show you what I got going on. So this is quite easy, simple. Um, there's going to be a few different options you're going to have for doing this. Obviously, banana plugs are the easiest. Those are the type of speaker wires that I've got here from AudioQuest. They've got banana plugs pre-terminated from the factory on there, so those are just going to be pushed in. Uh, keep in mind, make sure if you are using banana plugs, those terminals are going to want to be tight. So you're going to want to tighten those guys down and make sure they're making contact, the contacts on the receiver there. And if you're not using banana plugs, uh, there's so many different types of connectors, I'm not going to go through those, but you're going to want to connect them accordingly. So, we used wires for our center channel and our surround channels, as you can see right here. And one thing you really want to make sure, if you're not using uh, banana plugs, you're going to want to make sure you get that phase correct, guys. Phase is the positive and negative uh, terminal, so you want to make sure those are correct. It doesn't really matter if you use the darker or lighter wire for the positive or negative. Just remember which one you're using and connecting it to the back of the speaker. If you've got that improperly wired up, um, it can not only damage the amplifier, but also the speaker. So make sure you get that correct, guys, or in the proper input. All right, so we've got a positive and negative. That's pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy. We're just going to go ahead and connect our corresponding speaker to that input here. So we're going to hide the speaker wires on up last, but before we plug in the receiver or do anything else, we've already got our HDMI cables all set in there. We're going to go ahead and plug in the front speakers or actually connect them. So all right, I've got my left speaker right here. I'm just going to, this is very, very simple with the banana plugs, just push on in. Like I said, make sure they're tightened down. So we're going to do left first. And bam, those are simple. The AudioQuest cables are all uh, directional, so they'll let you know whether it's the amplifier end or the speaker end. So we've got this cable kind of sitting up like that. We want to push him down so he's nice and hidden with the rest of the wires. So we'll do that probably last. And then it's connecting our right speaker on up. So, got our right bookshelf speaker. I'm just going to swing you around here one more time. And we're going to connect our right speaker 
in as well. So make sure they're straight when they're going in there. You don't want to bend these banana plugs or put any added strain on the terminals if you don't have to. So make sure you got enough cord length here and it's going to be as simple as just doing this again. Alrighty, there we've got our front two channels connected. Uh, the heart of any stereo system is going to be the front two channels, of course. The next after that would be the center channel. I've explained before placement issues. Um, it should be ear listening level, you know, ear height or eye level. Uh, in this case, I can't do it because it will not fit on that second shelf here. But you're going to want to have that center channel as, you know, as close to ear level as you can get it, guys. So I've already went ahead and done this for you because it's just too difficult to do holding the camera. However, with the wires, like I said, one of the most important aspects is getting that phase correct, the positive and negative, getting those terminals correct and in the correct ports. Obviously, tighten them down, not too, di you know, not too hard. Uh, but if you've got it, you know, tightened down, it's going to make contact, and you're going to get a audio signal. Talked about speaker wires before. I'm not going to go there in this video, guys. However, in the last video, I want to point one thing out. Um, I actually connected the power amplifier to the wrong input or I'm sorry, output, uh, it should be going to the preamp output of front, left, and right, or whatever channels you're going to be sending a signal to the power amplifier is. So I connected them to like the zone three uh, ports as opposed to the front, left, right. So I went ahead and made that correction, plugged those into the right outputs, the RCA wires that are just going to the back of the power amplifier under input on the correct channels, and then any additional or corresponding RCA cables to other power amplifiers. Um, in this case, I'm only going to be running the two channels right now. Uh, I'll do a video where I actually connect those to the front height channels and then rear height channels and then add the 5175 power amplifier where we're doing five channels. Okay, so you've got everything you need to connect so far. You've got your speaker wires connected on up. Um, everything's connected to the back of the receiver. You've figured out where you're going to place your speakers. I'm not running a surround back channel just yet because it was easier for me to calibrate the system using just four height channels, a front, left, and right, a center, and two surround speakers. So in a later video, I'll connect everything on up and show you how to do so. However, it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. Um, I went ahead and calibrated the system on up with the Odyssey Multi EQ XT32 calibration here. And I can tell you that it is a night and day difference. So you're going to want to do that the next step after you've connected all of your speakers into your receiver. However, for me, the last step was actually giving power. I like to keep everything off, unplugged while I'm setting it on up. So in this case, we used a aftermarket audio quest power supply, as you can see there, an X. NRG cable. So went ahead and plugged in the receiver, got it power. I highly, highly recommend always using a surge, prote surge protector or AC power line conditioner. Uh, it doesn't only clean up the signal. There's not really much to clean up in an AC line, alternating current line. However, uh, it's more or less the peace of mind with the surge protection. So not only do I get the ability to go see how much voltage we've got coming in. should always get a nominal 120 coming in. Uh, sometimes we get 118, sometimes we get 125. But this goes ahead and regulates the amount of voltage that we're getting in at all times. And then we're able to, with a click of a button here, see how much amperage draw we're having. So all of the components connected to this, which I've got all eight outlets connected actually, believe it or not, uh, we're able to see how much current they are drawing. So in this case, it is kind of astounding, uh, but yeah, we're running a, almost a full amp with everything in standby mode. Uh, the power amplifier is not switched on in the back. This receiver is plugged in. Believe it or not, your TV is going to suck a little bit of juice uh, turned off, you know, as far as it's plugged in. But one of the things we can do is go ahead and hit off on a surge protector or line conditioner like this, and then it'll reduce that power draw. It usually acts as if you've unplugged everything entirely, so it doesn't suck as much power as you're sitting in standby mode. Um, you know, I don't ever recommend actually plugging everything in directly to a wall or a power strip. A power strip can actually be the worst way to do things because you're drawing so much current out of a one outlet type deal and most likely you're going to be on a 15 amp uh, switch or breaker switch. 
even if you're on a 20 amp breaker switch, that is a lot of juice to suck out of there. But as you can see here, with everything turned on and even at reference volume, we're drawing nowhere near even three amps, guys. So should be fine on a 15 amp breaker switch. However, um, it is nice or best to use a surge protector. As I said before, it's more or less peace of mind. Last step though, guys, when we have all of our speaker wires connected, I'm gonna move through this kind of quickly just so it's easy and uh, not holding you guys up on anything. Uh, it's gonna be to calibrate the system. So I've posted my video of doing the system calibration using the microphone and the room correction. And you're gonna to wanna to do that as many times or as many places as you can. So in multiple listening positions, so that if you, know, if you got a friend over or you're sitting with a girlfriend or the wife and she's not in the exact sweet spot as they like to call it, uh, she's not going to get gypped out or uh, not hear the surround sound as it fully should be. So, um, but in most cases, make sure you've got all your connections on the proper port here. If you're running two displays, as I can be sometimes, sometimes I run a TV and a projector here on the wall. Uh, it's nice to have a secondary video and audio output like that. I've even got a third one for zone two, but we don't use that one, which is why we've got it capped up. I don't use the aux two input. We've got our PlayStation 4 in the media player right now, not in the game port. I did a PlayStation 3 earlier, that's why I kind of had the game port. Looks like it's over here. Game port uh, not used, so bring it back around real quick and show you that we got our Blu-ray player going into our DVD spot right there, and we've got our cable satellite box going into cable sat. Um, so, it's up to you, your choice, whether you want to set up the receiver before calibrating it or set everything up and then calibrate it. I always highly, highly recommend doing the room correction or calibration prior to actually listening to any audio out of the receiver. What that does is ensure that if you, say, messed up the phase, so say you got the positive and the negative and the negative and the positive terminal, you won't damage your speakers. If we went ahead and just turned this guy on now and, say, brought them to the radio or some a cable satellite source and turn the volume on up and we had that phase incorrect guys we could possibly damage not only like I said the speakers but also the amplifier itself so I always recommend highly first thing once you turn the sky on have volume down to zero and go straight to mm. room correction or calibration okay let's move on here so once you've got everything connected, guys, you've got it all set up, you've got it all wired up, the last step, or not last step, but next step more or less, is going to be for you to sit down and see how it all looks. Um, you can run your cabling, move your speaker wires, get them in the correct port. For instance, with the height channels, I didn't want to go into the wall with these speakers, uh, so I just kind of connected the speakers more or less to the trim there, ran it down and then into the back of the receiver as clean as I could do it. Now, I think we are seeing one wire still come down and I think that happens to be the subwoofer cable right here. So I'm gonna have to do some movement uh, replacement issues with that subwoofer cable. But the whole goal of the wiring is so that you can get a clean, nice integrated look. And I've got a set of RCAs waiting for the other power amplifier right there wound up out of speaker wire going to the height channel and then that subwoofer cable. So we need to move some of those things on around and the best thing uh, that you can do is use some sort of a cable management system. Now, in this case, I just wanna show you what I'm doing here. Um, I'm using a tie to kind of tie the cables up at a certain point. So if you can see it there, it's just a Velcro tie that kind of nicely wraps all the cables up into a little sleeve. Uh, but make sure also, I, I did something here that I want you to point out, or I want to point out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect our second monitor because I want to show you how it is putting strain on our regular, it's not really strain, but it could have been laying on our primary output here, our monitor output. So make sure you've got no cables that are too tight that are pulling on another one. Uh, that can either have your picture and audio jump in and out like that and make sure they're not actually um, under any stress. If the cable's under any stress, it could cause issues with your picture or audio. So make sure those cables are all moving freely. They're all running freely of each other. None of them are being pulled too tight. None of them are crisscrossing each other and whatnot. So as I said before, guys, the goal with the wiring is to, first of all, achieve a proper connection. So you want those connections to be solid. 
Uh, looks like I got an LED light flickering that's running out in my AC line conditioners plug there. But uh, so, it, you know, if you can use the uh, surge protector to plug everything into. But the second goal of the wiring should be at least make things look good. You don't want the wiring running all over the place. So if you can nicely integrate that wiring into the system, good. If not, try your best to in the future. So, as I said before, guys, the next step after connecting everything up to your receiver should be to kind of step back, take a look at everything, take a look at the speakers, make sure they're positioned, kind of moving towards you. Uh, make sure you got your height channels properly set up and whatnot, your wires running in the correct spot. I'm going to be going ahead and replacing those speakers with a pair of SVS elevation speakers here in the future. And then I am running SVS satellite speakers in the rear at this point. So what we're going to want to do is just step back, sit in the sweet spot, and the sweet spot is where the surround sound is going to sound the best. Before we turn anything on, double check and make sure you've got everything in the proper position. Once you've done that, the last or final step is going to be, let's turn everything on. So you've got your speakers connected. You've figured out whether you're running bi-amplifying or bi-amping speakers or bi-wiring speakers, how many speakers you're going to use, and you've placed them in the proper position. You've done your wiring. You've connected everything up. Last thing is going to be to turn it on. Notice well, one thing I want to point out here is our front left and right speakers. As I said before, we were using an AudioQuest Rocket 33 set of cables. Those cables have four terminals on the end, as you can see. And what that means is that we're technically by wiring our speakers. So we are sending a sort of a separating the signal between the bass and the treble. As you can see here on these wires, one says treble, and the other set should say bass. And while that's a decent way of doing it, I don't always recommend bi-amping surround sound receivers. If we take a look at the back of the receiver for a second again, I'm going to tell you why. While it is certainly your choice whether you want to bi-amplify a set of speakers or bi-wire them or just run the wiring, normally um, the only disadvantage you have with a surround sound receiver with bi-wiring is most likely you're going to be using the surround back port there for your front speakers or whichever speakers you're by wiring. And the reason is because a lot of these surround sound receivers call the surround back ports their set of speakers B. So in this case, and I haven't done it just yet, I'll do it in a later video, but the reason I'm leaving those surround back ports free right now is I'm going to be connecting these front bookshelf speakers up as speakers B. I'm doing it for several reasons. I'm just kind of moving on into other speakers and testing the stuff out and whatnot. At some point here, I'll go ahead and connect a setup. I've got more NHTs and the piano gloss kind of look here. I'll run as the surround back. Uh, that'll integrate them nicely with the surround speakers. If you can, a lot of people recommend leaving all of the speaker brands the same. That way the sound is kind of going to be well, it's going to match each other. If you've got so many different brands of speakers as I have in the past, oh man, I had different brands as front and then a different right. It doesn't make for the best sound. However, one note on that. It can be expensive to match all the speakers or if you've got a set of speakers to buy more of those exact same. One thing you can do is sort of do what I've done. Uh, I've matched at least seven speakers up, not for the time being, but for the time I've got five that are all the SVSs, uh, the two elevations coming soon here. But um, I have done a front, left, and right, and a center the same in the same series. That is the least I can recommend in terms of matching the sound to the front soundstage. And then from there, making, and I have had this, but those satellite speakers or the SVS bookshelf speakers as the surrounds and satellites for the surround rear. Now, it wasn't until I moved up into height speakers that I had to actually separate the brands so much, but at the very least, if you're going to try and match the speakers, try and match the front left and right and the center speaker. Beyond that, well, everything's up for grabs. So let's sit back here and turn everything on and see what we got. If you'd like to calibrate your receiver remote to your television, it's easiest to do that. Some of the Marantz and the Denon do it seamlessly and integrate it nicely. And I'm going to show you some small tricks after this. So let's go ahead and turn on our receipt. I'm sorry, our TV here. Get that on, and then we're going to see if everything's been properly hooked up here.